recent study authored by Dr. Michael Hollick from Boston University found that having adequate levels of vitamin D in a human body resulted in a significant decreased risk for adverse clinical outcomes from COVID-19. Dr. Hollick joins us today to discuss his findings. Welcome, Dr. Hollick. Thank you for having me. Well, this is a very hot topic right now, and let's get right to it. What did your study conclude? Well, what we found was in over uh, 200 patients that presented to a hospital with serious, serious COVID infection, uh, we then looked at their vitamin D status and related it to their health outcomes as a result of both the uh, morbidity and mortality associated with this viral infection. And what we observed was that there was a significant decreased risk by more than 50% if you're over the age of 40 and vitamin D sufficient in dying from this infectious disease. It also reduced risk of um, lack of oxygen and other complications of the um, COVID-19 um, uh, cytokine storm that is a major complication from this infectious disease. Dr. Hawk, how was your study conducted? How many patients were involved? So over 200 patients, about 235 patients, 74% of them had presented to the hospital with serious infection. And recently there have been other studies that support your findings. Is this correct? That's correct. In fact, we did a, a separate study where we looked at 191,000 COVID positive patients in all 50 of the United States and related their vitamin D status and risk of acquiring this infection. And we found no matter whether your age, sex, ethnicity, or where you live, the higher your vitamin D status, which is serum 25-hydroxy vitamin D, lower was your risk for acquiring this infection. Now, Dr. Hollick, what exactly does vitamin, do, vitamin D do to fortify the body from the virus? Right. And so we now know that the immune cells in your body use vitamin D, and they use it very effectively by informing the immune cells how to destroy viruses and bacterial infections, as well as to regulate how the body reacts to a infectious disease and modulating the immune system in a way to prevent cytokine storm. That being said, does vitamin D also help fortify the body against other diseases and viruses in general? So there are studies from the National Health Survey showing that if your blood level of 25 hydroxy vitamin D uh, above 30 nanograms per ml reduces risk of upper respiratory tract infections um, significantly. A study done in Japan in school children showed that if they were on 1,500 units of vitamin D a day, reduced risk of influenza A infection by more than 40%. A study done out of Yale, um, New Haven, Connecticut, showed that um, those that had the highest blood levels of vitamin D reduced risk of upper respiratory tract infections by, again, more than 40%. So, yes, improvement in vitamin D status can modulate and maximize your immune system to help fight again against both bacterial and viral infections. Is there a certain population that is more at risk for vitamin D deficiency? What about us here in the Northeast with our cold and dark winters? Right. And so it turns out that the major source of vitamin D is sun. And we showed many years ago that if you live above Atlanta, Georgia, basically you cannot make any vitamin D in your skin from sun exposure from about November until March. And milk contains about 100 units of vitamin D. We think that you need, on average, 1,500 to 2,000 units of vitamin D a day. So basically everyone is at risk of vitamin D deficiency. But those that are most at risk are people of color because if they are exposed to some sunlight, they need to be out for a much longer time because their 
Skin pigment acts like a natural sunscreen, reducing the efficiency of the skin and producing vitamin D. Obese people need two to three times more vitamin D because the vitamin D gets diluted in the body fat. And we know that obesity is one of the uh, major risk factors for people having serious consequences from this uh, coronavirus infection. Dr. Harlick, before we go, I'd love to ask you, what is the best way to supplement vitamin D in the human body? Is it through a capsule? Is it through food? Right, so there's essentially no vitamin D in your diet. So mushrooms exposed to sunlight, cod liver oil, and uh, oily fish are your major sources. And so what we do recommend is a vitamin D supplement. And the Endocrine Society recommends infants 400 to 1,000 units a day, children 600 to 1,000 units a day, adults 1,500 to 2,000 units a day. And if you're obese, you need two to three times more. I have all of my patients are on about 3,000 to 5,000 units of vitamin D a day, and they're all doing well. Well, that's wonderful to hear, Dr. Michael Hollick from Boston University. Thanks so much for joining me today. It was my pleasure. Thank you, and have a delightful day. You too.